Okay, so this is going to demonstrate how to, one way to do this 45 degree pipe elbow that is our assignment here, and we'll be using this as our start point. And again, this is just one way of doing it. It may not necessarily be the most efficient way, but it's a good way to kind of think of this as we go through. So like I said before, the a couple of things you want to keep in mind is that it's a 45 degree elbow. It's 45 degrees from the bottom of this square flange down here to the top of this circular flange at the top. Um, a couple other things to see here is that from the center of you know that rotation, that angle there, okay, it's four and seven eighths to the center of this one and that one. And you'll see why that comes into play in just a couple of minutes. Not only is it you know the, the radius of this arc, but it's also where I'm going to put in some geometry and stuff. So um, I'm going to start off by using Inventor and I will create a new part. And I'm going to create this first sketch on this plane right here so that when we revolve it, it, it makes sense. So I'll, I'll put it on this plane. Um, and again, if you think about where it's going to be, I'm going to draw that rectangle kind of up here, not on the origin, but up above the origin a little bit here. And, and again, it'll make a little bit more sense in a few minutes. So uh, if I come in here and I draw that rectangular flange, it's going to be down here. It's a square, so I'll set these two as equal. I'm going to put in a, uh, a constraint between that and that. And then <clears throat> Um, I'm also going to put in a couple of construction lines just to kind of help here. Actually, I'll just probably put in one that goes from there to there. And it's, it's along the midpoint there. And it'll allow me to put in a dimension here in a little while. If I wanted to, I could put in another one, but I think it's not necessary. So uh, if we look at the part here, again, it's three and three quarters square. Okay, and from the center point, it's that four and seven eighths out there. So coming back to inventor now, I can say that this is three and three quarters square. And from this point right here to this line, that's our four and seven eighths. So now you see what I've done is I've, you know, I've defined where that square flange is going to be. Okay, and it happens to be four and seven eighths from here, and you'll see why that makes a difference. You know, it's just kind of a we're using some of the tools inside of Inventor as as far as um, our origin geometry to help make things a little bit easier in the future. So I'll say, okay, let's finish this sketch, and I'm not go well. I could extrude it now. Um, I'll go ahead and extrude it now. So if I extrude that. We're going to extrude this first flange here a half of an inch, okay? So I'll come back to here and I'll say let's extrude it a half of an inch and say okay. And like I said, I'm not worried about rounding off the edges or putting holes or anything in it. That'll all come later. The next one I'm going to draw is going to be this circular flange on the other side. And it's 45 degrees you know, it's got a 45 degree angle between this one. And again, that point right there is my start point. So what I'm going to do is use some of these new tools that we've created here. I'm going to put in a work plane, okay, along the x-axis. Okay, so I'm gonna use the x-axis and I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees from that. See what I've done there is I created that work plane in there so that it's 45 degrees separated. And now what I can do is I can create a new sketch on that plane and I can do the same thing that I just did for the square. So I can say it's got a circle um, and you know the circle has a diameter of three and seven eighths. Okay, so I'll dimension that has a diameter of three and seven eighths. And the distance from there to that center point is also that same four and seven eighths dimension. 
you can see that I still need one dimension. It doesn't know where this thing is, you know, as far as placement goes. So I need to have that vertical dimension there or vertical constraint. So I want a vertical constraint between there and there. And so now if I go back to F6, you can see that I've placed that flange where it's going to be. I can finish this sketch and then I can extrude this one down in that direction, a half of an inch. And I can say, okay. And so now I've got my two flanges in place. This, I don't, don't delete that, just turn the visibility off of it. So now the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and put in the, um, the, the pipe itself. Okay, so now the pipe itself, you got to think about it a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sweep. So I'll draw the outside diameter of the pipe. I'll draw the inside diameter of the pipe. And I will draw the path of the pipe, which will be this arc right here. So again, you'll see why it made sense that I didn't start on my origin, but I started away from my origin. I will start, um, uh, I can create a new, I'll, I'll create the pathway first, just so you can see it. I'll create a new sketch, and that new sketch is gonna go on the YZ plane. And use my slice geometry F7. And basically what I want is, I want to take and I will project as, uh, uh, construction lines here, I will project that edge there and that edge there. Oops. Project that edge there as construction line and that edge there as construction line. Kind of hard to see, but they're there. And now I'm going to draw a circle that goes from the center point to that midpoint. I can cut off what I don't need. Okay. You'll see that it does say one dimension needed. And again, it's just because it knows where the center is, but even though I put it on that center point, it didn't persist. So I just have to add in a constraint from there to there, and now it's stuck. It's better to put in a constraint because I've already defined what size this is and where it is. So rather than putting another dimension on, um, if any of that other dimension or any of the other information changes, this automatically updates. So this becomes our pathway. I can finish this sketch. And I'll go ahead and put the circle that represents the inside and the outside of the pipe on this one here. So I'll say I want a new sketch on this one. It's going to be two circles. One of them is going to represent the inside diameter of the pipe elbow, and the other one will represent the outside diameter of that pipe elbow. Okay, The inside diameter um, there you can see is a one and five eighths core and then this distance right here is three eighths and I don't need to know the outside diameter okay I can just say this one is one and five eighths and then I can just say this distance here is three eighths so it looks just like it did you know in the in the drawing itself um, it does say two dimensions needed again it doesn't recognize that that's the same there so I'll just say um, if I say, you know, project geometry, I'll do it as a construction line again so that I'm not getting issues here. Project that as geometry, and now I can say that that point and that point are exactly the same. So I can finish that sketch. So the next thing I'll do is I will extrude all of this, both of these, as a solid, and then I'll do one more, not extrude, sweep, um, and I'll cut this one out. I can't just do this one as a, you know, I could just do this one, but then I still have to end up coming through and cutting out the middle anyway, so it, it doesn't help me out. So I'll say sweep is our next tool. My um, shapes that I want to sweep, my profiles that I want to sweep are those two. The path is that one there. I'll say OK. Um, and that's OK. Oops didn't want it to be a cutout, not yet. So let's do this again. Sweep that and that. And my curve is this one. And I want it as a join right now. And it's going to give me that notice saying it doesn't intersect. It basically saying that this isn't on the profile, but it's stable. It's on the inside, so it's fine. 
So there's the, there's the first part. And what I was saying earlier is notice that as the elbow pipe comes through this square flange, it's not coming straight up here. It's, it's normal down here. It's not normal here. You can see how that makes a little bit of a difference there. So then we'll come back here and we'll share both of these, turn the visibility on both of these back on. And this time we'll sweep and we'll cut out this middle part. So we'll say sweep, there's the profile, and then the curve, a little bit harder to see. You just kind of have to find it in there. That's going to be the cut. We'll say OK. And now that that cut is out, we can turn the visibility off on both of these. So the hard part's done at this point. Um, remember, you, you kind of do your major stuff first, and then you do your placed features last. So if I come in here now and I say, OK, let's, uh, let's switch back to the drawing here. If we want to put these four in, these four holes right here, two and five eighths, two and five eighths. Um, there's a couple different ways to do this. You could pattern them, which is what I want you to do for this. Now, again, it's not necessarily the best way to do it, but um, the four holes in the base may be created with four points in one sketch using the whole feature to create all at once. That's the way you're going to do that. So that's the way we'll do that one. And then this one right here is going to be a pattern. Okay, so the four slots on the top surface will be a pattern. So gonna, if we want to put these four holes in, we'll just create a sketch and put, you know, deals at the bottom there. And you can create the sketch on this surface or you can create it on the bottom surface. It doesn't really matter. So I'll do it on the bottom. Create my sketch on that surface. Again, I'm going to project um, geometry I'm going to project that whole. I'm just going to pick the outside edges here. I'm not going to get the circle. Okay, so there's that one. And now what I want to do is um, I want to create my geometry for my holes. And I'm going to do this as a construction line as well. Because I don't want to project that, I'm just using it to hold things still. So now I can constrain, and I want a constraint between that point and that point, and I want a constraint between that point and that point, and then I'm going to make these equal. So now it's all the same, same. And we can go back in and say it's 2 and 5 eighths on each side, and I can put this in wherever I want. Notice that we're fully constrained in the corner down here, and I'll put in the four points. Finish that sketch. So now when I put my holes in, this is one thing to be aware of. You have to be careful. Notice that my holes, if I say through all, it truly goes through all, including up here, and that's not what we want at all. Okay. So those four holes are 3 8 diameter holes. Okay, So we'll change our diameters here to 3 8 And they don't go through all, but we're going to use this 2 right here. We're going to say 2, and I want them to go to that surface right there and stop so that we don't have them going through the other surface up here at the top. So that's that one. This one here, we want to draw one of the slots and then pattern it around the edge. So we'll say we want a new sketch on that surface. This time I'm going to project geometry, but I will project it as actual geometry because what I want to do is cut out a part of it using that. So come up here and create your geometry that you're going to cut out. Okay, this has to line up, this right here has to line up with the center. Now, if we come back here and look at this, notice there's this center line right here. Okay, and this center line has a, uh, a diameter of 3 and 3 eighths. So I need to put that in as a construction line so that I can control where the center of each of these are. So I can come in here now and say, as a construction line, I'm going to put in a circle. 
which goes from there through that point. And now I can control that size by 375, like that. And then lastly, it's 3 eighths of an inch across that slot. So I can put in this dimension from there to there is 3 eighths. OK, again, notice we're fully constrained just with those two dimensions on this because of the way I've used my constraints. Finish that sketch. We will extrude just that portion there. And this is going to be the hard part. Sometimes when you get in here, you it, it wants to select the wrong stuff. So make sure you get the right thing. We're going to cut out. But again, not through all. We're going to say to, or we could say to the next, which is just fine. So it creates that, cuts that out. And we say, OK. And now we just need four more. And the idea here was I wanted you to do this one. Rather than draw all four of them or pattern them in the sketch, if you do just one here, you can pattern it later and you can change the numbers. So I'll say I want a circular pattern. The feature is that slot we just created. The rotational axis is you can pick that outside edge there. And notice that it comes up with six right off the bat, but we'll just change that to four. We say OK. And now we've got the four in there. So then the last final step here is to put in our fillets. I need eighth inch fillet there, eighth inch fillet there, and then these four rounds down here, nine sixteenths. I can nest them all together in one. So we'll say fillets and thread fillets and rounds. We'll start off with the nine sixteenths. And it's going to be on these four corners down here. One two, three, four, and then I want the eighth inch one. It's going to go there and there. And that concludes the modeling of that part.